Did you guys see the title of the show this morning? Uh, I'm looking right now. Yeah. What? Yeah. Ha- what? Is, Is that title? real? Okay, I'm ready to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Proposal for a new carousel coming to St. Augustine. Wait a minute. Hold on. Getting before the city commission. Okay. What? For real? I'm not involved. Chill. <laughs> Thank God. We were, we were about to yeah. fight. Oh, we were one. about to fight. What? Oh God! Can we give it up already? <laughs> is this Can a Mike Davis prank? Already? This is. I, I hope it is. It feels like one. I hope yeah. it's a Mike Davis prank. I, I hope prank. it is. I think so. I hope it is, but I feel like I've heard rumblings about this. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm gonna get 904 on my side. <laughs> 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 yeah, we don't really do that, but no. uh, we're always we're always on your side. We don't have the energy for that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make special segments about being on your side. We're always on your right, side. Right, exactly yeah. everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also got County Administrator Joy Andrews joining us in the studio today. Hey. We're going to talk to her in just a few minutes. Um, we've got a lot going on with the County Commission. We have got uh, some parks. Tried uh, Troy's uh, oh. Troy's favorite thing in the world. Parks. Absolutely. <laughs> Still has not let go of his passion for parks. No one's named one yeah. after him yet. That's, <laughs> That's why. true. I'm still alive. Come yeah. on, Joy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Hold the patience. <laughs> yeah, uh, still here. Oh, <laughs> boy. We okay, see? Him. It's in the works, Troy. It's on the radar <laughs> of the county commission now. I'm still alive. You're That's getting cool. your own park name. Let's not rush that At one. some point in history, <laughs> way far in the future. So proud. Uh, <laughs> they've got a comprehensive plan survey they want folks to participate in. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, we touched on it yesterday or the day before, the Black History Museum yes. that we are up for uh, bringing here. It feels like we have all the components to make this successful. Uh, we'll talk to Joy and see what she thinks. Uh, and Boomer. Boy, Boomer that was moment. Great, Boomer moment. Great Anyone job, wants to know that was Davey. Davey. Yeah, wow, the yeah. youngest one in the room. <laughs> You wish. (laughs) You wish. (laughs) Um, And we got a whole lot more. Let's see what else we got. I haven't even scrolled down to news two. I haven't even scrolled down to the second half of the show. Oh, we've got uh, the city celebrating Arbor Day. Oh, Mm. what's that about? I don't know. We'll get there. Okay. And uh, tree hugger. But they're nice people. I'm the parks guy. I Come on, man. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, no, no, yeah well, seriously. You just seriously. turned into an industrial park. Is what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Troy only likes warehouse <laughs> parks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have you guys saved a preserve? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Troy. The best oh, ever. We love you, Troy. <laughs> We also love the Florida Man Games, hey. presented by Flow Groom. This is going to be huge, man. We got people coming in from all over the globe mm-hmm. for this thing. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. world is excited about the Florida Man Games. They're coming from Australia. They're coming from London. They're coming from Canada. They're coming from Alaska. Wow. Hawaii. This is awesome. Mexico. Oh, my people. See, yeah. my hand. Mm. They're coming from all over the place. Awesome, except for Russia. Russia's oh wow, they're great. They're they were invited. Yeah. Well, yeah. they've got you know they've got their they've probably got the Russia Man games. It's probably fighting enough. bears and things right. like that. Right? You know? Yes, riding a moose or something. Sure. We're not going to have bears, but we're going to have alligators. Oh, okay. going to have alligators. You can take a selfie with an alligator if you want to, and Scary. check out some cool alligator shows from Gatorland. Love Gatorland. Yeah, Gatorland is amazing. Gatorland's great. They're bringing some very popular folks down here to come hang out with us and hang out with gators so that's exciting cool um we've <laughs> we've got some great teeth did you guys see the thing i put out on social media the other day yesterday i think it was where the guy got the florida man logo tattooed on his oh, leg yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes what yeah. is this about he got our logo tattooed on his leg and of course he did it himself in um, true florida man style uh-huh. he did it himself so is it infected by now possibly in, wow. in the back of a moving jeep <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it looks like. I think Chris is a very nice guy. I thought it was maybe awesome. only half done. Maybe he was going to like... It is about half done. Okay. He's still got to add some of the red and some of the Ruby. other blues. He's got the light blue done. Okay. Mm-hmm. Still, then, looks, still yeah. looks awesome. And then he tattooed his team logo on his other leg. I know. I saw that. He's really dedicated <laughs> to the Florida Man games very and intense. really jumping in head first in the Florida Man uh, culture. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Wow. His <laughs> mom is so proud. <laughs> I'm sure she is. Many honestly. blessings. I'm yeah. sure she is. Uh, I've got to give a shout out to our friends at Ripley's Atlantic Marine, Power Sports STA, Prohibition Kitchen for providing our VIP food out there as well. Bozard Ford Lincoln, Mastercraft. Uh, they're our local sponsors of this thing. And then, of course, you guys saw we got some we got some big time national folks in there as well. So which cool. Is really cool. Davey Hartzell. Oh, please. Davey Hartzell. Outlet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
The Florida Man Games.com, presented by Flowgrown, hosted by OMG. It's Wix. Oh, very, very cool. Everybody's very excited about that. Who's going we on here? We announced. And we got a big announcement <laughs> tomorrow, right? You promised. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, great. <laughs> yes, we've got a we've got a big announcement tomorrow. We have a floorgasm tomorrow. Are you going to do pre-sale merch? Oh, pre-sale, pre-sale merch. Merch is coming. Okay, merch is going to be provided by our friends at Flowgrown. Be so fun to rock some. Of that They're making some stuff. custom uh, Florida stuff. They are the 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 apparel brand in Florida. Yeah, they are the go-to. Uh, the FloridaManGames.com. Also, big shout out to our friends at Posart Ford Lincoln. Couldn't do this show without them celebrating 75 years here in St. Augustine in Northeast Florida. Bozard Ford Lincoln is here for you. You can experience their extensive selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, quick and quality servicing, and their parts and accessories shop that's absolutely second to none. Make sure you grab a signature burger out there at Ford's Garage while you are there. They offer services from home delivery to uh, company fleet servicing. At Bozard Ford Lincoln, your family is their family, and they are driven to inspire. Very nice. Yes. All right, also big shout out to our friends at Fidus Roofing, Great Expectations, Realty and Auction, Chiba Hut Toasted Sub, St. Augie's Pizza, BHF Insurance, Amara Med Spa, Griffin Service, Chris Lucero, Bail Bonds, and Willow in Maine, who we'll talk about very, very shortly. But first, how's everybody doing? Good morning, Troy, Davey. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Playing the booth. Spaghetti. Yes, it Woo-hoo. is. So excited. Yeah. Um, Clay, how you doing back there in the booth? Don't ask. Oh. oh no! Okay. Okay. Was it traffic oh. again? Maybe we'll hear about it soon. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Very silent wow. back Thanks. there. Wow. That's unusual for Glenn. I didn't Glenn. Need Very it, silent. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Joy Andrews joining on this us in the studio. Joy, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Waking up still a little bit, actually. <laughs> trying to trying to wake up all the way. Um, and to help me do that. I will recruit Troy for the question of the day. All right, question of the day, and, and uh, today is actually National Winnie the Pooh Day. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. come on! You know? come but on. I mean, he just made me think of Eeyore. I Great was just, horror movie. Oh. Yeah, it, but I okay. didn't realize we had an Eeyore with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, question of the day. Thank you, Davey, for the question of the day. What fashion brand did you use that no longer exists? What oh. fashion brand did you use that no longer exists? Okay, I. It doesn't exist in the mainstream anymore, but as I understand, they still make jeans. And I'm going to say Jinko, very popular when I was in high school. Very popular. Very, very yeah. popular. Yeah. Jinko. You know what wasn't popular that's popular now? The Champion brand. The Champion brand was like kind of like the Kmart brand I'm back in the day. I'm actually going to check you yeah. on this. It is actually very, it's now moved into the luxury category. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you <laughs> need to check out like Urban Outfitters. I it's like their top. shirts in my I know. closet from 40 years. I am years. telling you, hold on to all your Champion <laughs> but, vintage stuff. Yes. I was it is, embarrassed to wear it. Yes. Same thing, with, same thing with Jordash. It's a. It's totally another like no. luxury brand that still exists, yeah. but it's now, they've elevated their their their, uh, their brand. Yeah. No Crazy. way. Champion. It was is luxury. No. I, I, my world's come full circle. You got made fun of if you wore champion and yeah. when I was in oh, high no, school. Oh, no, not now. Yeah. It's a cool kid moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, I'm going to go Mavi jeans in my uh, in my tall world. They were like the tall, slender jean cut back in the day. But yeah, M-A-V-I jeans. That's was why it? I've was never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was probably skinny jeans before skinny jeans were around. Cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. There you go. That and American Apparel with a deep V cut. That's mm-hmm. all you needed to go to the gay bar in Detroit. I'm telling you right now, you okay. can pop and lock Brittany all night long. <laughs> you didn't have to wait in line. You just like No, there's no doubt. That was a free pass. That was a pass okay, to VIP. Wow. Yes. There you go. Right. Okay. <laughs> Troy, you, you wouldn't make it being gay. No, no, no. I can't you just don't have. No, you can't pull it off. Yeah, as a joke. Put you, yeah. <laughs> right. You get along with the bears. Would I be a daddy or a zaddy? Da- oh no. Well, you'd be a zaddy. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Wait, what's a zaddy? You no, guys gotta fill me in daddy. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> zaddy, daddy. <laughs> I know my role. God bless ya. <laughs> Just don't drop the soap. <laughs> oh, Joy just left. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we love Why you. Are we <laughs> Clay, what you, uh, got? Clay, what you got? Oh, I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Oh, oh. What, fas- what fashion brand did you used to use uh, that no longer exists? Um. <laughs> All right, we're skipping Clay. All right, right. let's we'll say Umbro. He said Umbro. Very <laughs> yeah. good. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Umbro. Right. I remember Umbro. Umbro. Yeah. Soccer brand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right. And, Boy, and we're off to a great start. I, I got to tell you right now, I mean, I saved up 
to have a members only jacket. Oh yeah, yeah. And, okay. And it was like you know another one that's I, worth it. I, yeah. I, ended, I ended up having two. I so hope I you still have I was them. Like because I saved and I had a, I had a burgundy one and then Ooh. I had a, and then I had a silver one. Ooh, okay. You still and have them? I, I don't. You better. I don't. Wow. I had the burgundy one for a while. I mean, I'm the exact same size. So mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't changed. Yeah. In, in 40 years on that, but I mean, I I I saved up to have those, and I I thought I was just the man. And I, I would try and dance like Michael Jackson. Failed, oh, I like failed it. Failed horrible. Moonwalking. Oh, oh, yeah, I don't even want to. Failed. I hope there's not video of that oh, anywhere. Criminal. That's, well, I don't know what yeah, that was. was. Yeah. Okay. Did you just have a seizure? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. I liked it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With motion yeah. there. Yeah. That's okay. better with music. Actually, it's not. <laughs> I don't it's think worse. it is. It's I don't worse. think it is. Um, <laughs> Joey, what about you? Did you have a fashion brand growing up that uh, you remember that's just not around anymore? Um, I got nothing. Um, J. Crew is still around, right? No. No. Oh, there, no there you go. Right. That is out. Yeah. J. Crew. Yeah. I think J. Crew outlet still exists, but J. Crew brand is like oh, out. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I got one. Yeah, they got bought yeah. out. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. There you go. I thought you were going to say <laughs> wet seal. I was like, go ahead, girl. <laughs> There go around wet seal. That was the that was the mall moment. Yes. You're not supposed to tell. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Remember baby tops too? Like the girls had to have. Oh yeah. Baby tops. Yeah. Please. You guys are speaking a different language. I know. I'm like a historian yeah, over I here, and I got. Okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> my mustache is really creeping up into my nose this morning. It's one of those days worry, that we've, that we've talked about oh, that yeah. where it's like, yeah. God, that's yeah, it looks like a party favor today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Fiber. <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys' answers out there. No, they're all flying in. Yeah. All right. We now go to Troy for a quick check of the weather, Troy. Nice day. That quick check of the weather brought to you by Great Expectations Realty and Auction. They can sell your home, your business, and everything in it. Check them out at geauction.com, gerealty.us. We now go to Clay Blasser for our much-loved traffic report, Clay. Is this microphone off? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is something fabulous. <laughs> but there is a... All you really need to know is there's a backup here um, by the jail to the gates of the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty nasty. US, US 1 southbound's really. Okay. <laughs> a parking lot. <clears throat> Other than that, there's yeah. really nothing, so have fun. Well, at least there's parking somewhere in the city. Yeah, there's parking. <laughs> at least we've got a Solve parking lot parking somewhere. Right. There we go. Just park right there on US 1. And no one else can get in town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, it's two, it serves two purposes there, Troy, for Jeez. me. All right. <sighs> oh, thank you, Clay, for that. Technically, a traffic report. Yeah, true. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> he built us up this week. He, uh, I mean, he, he really did. did. You know? He was crushing it this <laughs> week. I gotta bring it back down. <laughs> he's, um, now he's, he's setting, running, set, making sure we don't set the bar too high. He, he's I literally it's a nice wearing, strategy. Yeah. He's I still bringing Winnie the Pooh too much. Uh, I fell you asleep fell asleep at uh, six a.m. So yeah. Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh gosh. Gotcha. Right. It's one of those days, and yesterday was a really bad day. So. It's still technically yesterday. Uh, okay. Oh. Well, we're going to lift you up with a Josh Groban song. I, knew, gotcha. I knew the name Josh Groban was coming. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Had, yep. had to come in. Yeah. Yep. Three years. <laughs> jokes. All right. That's your <laughs> brought to you. Yeah, we need Lynch. to get you a new joke repertoire. <laughs> I'm going to buy you a dad joke book. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, so you remember those? Those book of jokes that were just the corniest <laughs> jokes ever? Ever. You try to tell to them come. at school and you just get laughed at. <laughs> so I'm hey, with Mike Davis once just, week. just hold on to the ones that work because there's always a new audience. True, true. I've been telling the same jokes for 28 years. I know you have. God bless you. And they still show up. All right. Amara Med Spa. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if your skin has lost its luster, you can refresh and renew at Amara Med Spa. Uh, They've got some great services out there. Their expert therapist will deliver groundbreaking treatments and facials tailored to your needs. You have high standards, and so do they at Amara Med Spa. Visit them. Begin your transformation at theamaramedspa.com, where your beauty journey begins. All right. Thank God for Vibe this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's Tristan Bailey Day, too. Rest it is Tristan Jeez, Bailey like, Day. Oh, yeah. 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 They're selling teal teas down there at the Vibe. You know, Sarah's a cheer mom. Yes, sir. Her daughter uh, and their family are friends. Mm-hmm. So um, I know this is, uh, she takes this very, very seriously. And, and honoring Tristan is something she does 
all the time, Legendary. multiple times a year. Yes. So um, that's awesome. Love you, Sarah. Yeah. Go in there and get a TLT in honor of Tristan this morning. Yeah, they do so much for the community. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, they do. Their whole family. So Chris, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We forget to mention Chris because he never gives us drinks in the like morning. He doesn't like the spotlight anyway. He doesn't. He really doesn't. <laughs> He's not a be out and flashy no. guy, but we Good appreciate people. Chris and Sarah and everything they do out here in St. John's County. Joy Andrews with us this morning. Hey. She's been sitting patiently and wondering if she should leave. Yeah. Uh, no, never. <laughs> already. How are you this morning officially? Good to um, see you. Good. Good to see you. Good. I'm good. Good. Fun. Good. Good. Um, you guys got a lot going on at the county right now. Uh, let's start with something that we know Troy loves. Parks. You guys got some new projects. You got some money coming in for boat ramps. We got a lot going on with the parks in St. John's County, right? We do. We do. We have been really ramping up on our uh, parks and recreation projects, the capital projects, Treaty Park. Big investment on that one. Um, uh, Palm Valley Boat Ramp. That was just uh, yeah, yeah. that was done, and yeah. I just drove by the other day. It's being used. Um, uh, one and a half million, I think, that was the investment. We heard that was a huge yeah. blessing it's to that huge. area. Yeah. yeah, we had some concerns from the residents, but um, from what I can tell, it's going really well. Cool. It's it's uh, very much utilized, um, but we have more. We have more to come. 2024 yeah. is going to be a year of parks and recreation. Really? Um, okay. It, among other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. And Treaty Park, I mean, I, obviously it's... One that's really close to my heart because that was my first big project. So what's what's some of the things that's uh, happening out there at Treaty Park that, that you can share with us? Well, actually, Wing helped me uh, with a, a, a list, a sheet sheet over here so that we can capture everything. 1.5 million. So it's a playground uh, upgrade oh. on new play areas. Um, well, that's actually Cornerstone and the Collier Blocker Park um, in oh. West Augustine area. But um, the Treaty Park for that part is the the $1.4 million pl uh, playground upgrades with hey. some uh, resurfacing of the, um, I think it's the tennis courts and then the pickleball courts, the pickleball. which is super oh, yeah. popular. Yeah. 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 Jeez. Yeah. Pickleball has just totally overlapped oh, my tennis, gosh. hasn't it? There's it's a just... wait list to get into some of these courts. <laughs> yes. yeah. yes. they, yes. they, they have a whole hierarchy of pickleball. Like when, you go, when you go there, you hang your little paddle up oh, and then you really? kind of play your way oh, down. It's no. a whole culture. No, no, it's, a, it's an entire culture. And you can't remix that either. <laughs> Don't just go for recreation. You go for the life. Oh, yeah. Jeez, yeah. Like, like people start off like, oh, I'll go out and try pickleball. And then like the next week they have every guard. Right. And, like, yeah. I need a new paddle. They're right. sponsored. They got sponsorships <laughs> yeah. on their shirt. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So pickleball's big. It is big, especially for public space. Now, if you pay yeah. for membership, but there are places mm -hmm. covered in Daytona, but in St. John's County, we oh. really wanted to provide those public spaces. Cool. Yeah, well, we, we were fortunate before the pick a, pick a ball rage. We had paddle tennis, and the courts are the yeah. same size. So right. we kind of had a head start jump on a lot of other communities trying to catch up with the pickleball rate. Do you guys ever look at that with like trends? Like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw shuffleboard out there, but maybe that's not like somebody's playing that anymore. Do you take those courts away and like build something? Like, how does that well, me measure? And, and mm -hmm. Joy, I, I can tell you from my experience with, uh, one of the things that we did was we stopped building football fields or soccer fields. We built multi-purpose fields. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you can transition as... The games, you know, and it, and it came into play when lacrosse took off in Florida. Yeah. So, I mean, 25 years ago, lacrosse was nothing. But right, now, now right. it's one of the biggest sports. Mm -hmm. uh, Every school's it, got a lacrosse team. Everybody has and, a lacrosse yeah, team now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's an example of where uh, when, uh, and you guys, I think, are doing some stuff with the uh, the redoing of the artificial turf fields on some of those, too. When Davis we did, Park. Yeah, when we did the artificial turf fields, we made them where... It wasn't set for just just soccer. It was set for whatever whatever was coming. Okay. So and, okay, and the county the county's way way ahead of some of the stuff with the artificial turf fields in Florida. And Joy just mentioned Davis Park. Are you upset that uh, Mike Davis's family has a park before you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wrong Davis. Oh, oh, that's the wind that's Davis. That's a shame. <laughs> that's a shame. Yeah. Um, so cool. So uh, so, what can we look forward to then uh, more in the in the parks world in 2024? What are you excited about as far as? That's well, we concerned. have we have a lot of really existing parks improvements, like I mentioned, yeah. the Treaty Park, and of course the boat ramp, uh, waterway access. That was a really a legacy mission from when Commissioner Waldron was here. So, mm. uh, you know, there was a lot of investment that was already appropriated. It's of course it's just in the pipeline, 
But um, and then you know you have parks all over the all of the county. You have playground for the little ones, and you have all these uh, recreational sports. Um, you know, Troy knows about all of that, and also you have really intense um, the the competitive ones that you know. Mm. This past weekend, we were just dealing with the Florida. Well, actually, it's the Jacksonville Football Association. They had a tournament out in Davis Park, and because okay. we had the storm. So there was a lot of standing water. Our demand for our fields are incredible. I mean, it has yeah. grown, um, and our parents are really serious about playing. And you know, they they invested so much time and money on their kids. So yeah. 2024, one of the capital priorities is going to be parks and recreation. We have four regional parks are in planning. One regional uh, park, which is Davis Park, that we're going to do some major um, shifting. So, to, you know, just a little bit of a preview. We have not really wrote that out publicly yet. But for regional park, we are looking at a financing program of close to $100 million. And w included that is also the Davis Park that we're going to shift uh, some of those um, I think the baseball, ball field, and then the softball. We're trying to consolidate, in, um, you know, between the Nocatee Park and uh, Davis Park in that area, so mm. that it can be more efficient. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, a lot to come. So we have a lot new, uh, more new. That's exciting though for yeah. that community too to have all that, all, all those resources there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Davis Park is probably 20, 25 years old now. It's got to be. It's got to. It's it's time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was here before it's, I got yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think it was. 99 2000 somewhere around there yeah it's 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 probably our biggest regional park still right it's like 100 115 it is acres or something. yeah mm. oh wow, i didn't know that yeah mm. okay yeah, yeah there's a lot of room for expansion and like you said you know Troy, you're right about the the artificial turf is really a big deal because then you really expand hours that you can play mm. the condition you can play in so yeah cool. yeah so like a, a we use bermuda grass for athletic fields so it only can handle about 350 hours of play and then it kills the root system. And with so many teams and so many people moving in so quickly, it, it I mean, uh, Julian Creek area really, really suffered. And, uh, you know, that's one of, yeah. one of the places where they have the artificial, too. But the artificial field allows you to play in, you know, it stops raining, you can play right away. Right, right, right. You do that on the other field, you tear up the grass and you destroy everything. Okay. And it costs the taxpayers money getting it back. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So a another big thing on people's radar right now is uh, the possibility of getting this Black History Museum here in St. John's County. I know we are <clears throat> we're up against some other cities for this. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Where are we at on this right now? How are we looking, and how do we sustain something like this? Because that's <clears throat> that's an important component, right? Do we have an infrastructure in, in place that can help us sustain this if we're able to bring it here? I believe so. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty in terms of the resource that's going to be allocated to this um, amazing opportunity for St. John's County, not just for tourism, for economic development, for really cultural enhancement and preservation of history. Um, so in terms of the resource, what comes with the museum, we really don't know. So right now what we're working with is a one, there is a state bill that uh, really articulate for a need for a Florida uh, Black History Museum. And they also have uh, formed a task force with uh, members from all over the state. They are basically appointed by the state legislators. And then, so they meet regularly once a month. And they would discuss um, the selection criteria. They, in fact, to St. John's County, um, we as a team, and that would include uh, West Augustine community leaders, uh, our chairwoman, uh, Sarah Arnold, our TDC, our cultural council, our VCB, uh, myself, our team of legislative affairs, uh, public affairs, and in fact, uh, St. John's cultural, uh, uh, excuse me, St. John's um, the, the, the previous amphitheater, I can never say it right, SJCCE, mm. the whole team, I mean, we have an enormous team came together to an, in West Augustine uh, CRA, uh, steering committee. So we just made a presentation before task force in month of December or January, I couldn't remember, December, I think. Um, and at the time, I think we have nine competitions. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting dialogue in that presentation. There was a one task force member dropped out 
due to the suspicion of conflict of interest. Uh, mm. She was the she was the executive director of Watson Museum, and she, um, so this person sits on the task force and spoke for the Watson Museum at the same time mm-hmm. as one vote in terms of who she would support to, oh, wow. to, to be reviewed as a potential candidate for the site. But um, in terms of St. John's County, I really do not think, and we as a team, we don't think there is real competition. Our history, the richness of it, the support, um, the the potential support from the county, <coughs> the tourism backing. I mean, it's, I don't know, any competition is real competition. At do this you point. see it as like a nucleus to other organizations too, like Lincolnville Museum and Fort Mose? Do you see it sort of like an artery or resource for them? Absolutely. Well, they are not only a resource for each other. They really is a, a collection of the cultural assets that we have here. And this is why it needs to be here, you know, Fort Mose, groundbreaking. Um, is going to be this Friday. Uh, we have mm-hmm. a reception. Uh, in fact, it was a tomorrow or tonight, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we have purposefully really planned the series of events to really draw um, the support. And then we have, uh, let's see, we have three um, historical black university have voiced the support for our um, for our advocacy for St. John's County and Florida Memorial University have played a huge role in all of this because the cool. actual potential location um, is going to be where they used to be. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's it's an incredible story of redemption. You know, they they, they got ran out, their, their, their building were burnt and they went to Miami. Now it is amazing opportunity. They're coming back. And they're gonna um, they're gonna redemonstrate the strength of not only Florida Memorial University but also us as a community, not just Black community, but just us as a community as a whole. Yeah, you know, you got an Asian woman over there presenting. You got Greg White. You got Dawala. You got Sarah. You know, you ha- we have amazing team together. Um, in front of that task force. And I think our story was told in such a compelling way. Uh, we are really excited for this opportunity. Oh, yeah. I just got chills. I'm really excited. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, in, in that area, I mean, it's sat there since 1967, you know, and uh, people talk about playing in the in the ruins of Florida Memorial. So it's really nice. Um you know, where Call Your Blocker is, is where the president's house was. And I, I think we still have a lease with Florida Memorial on that. So um, I think they own where the fire station was at one point also. So, I mean, there's a lot of ties to Florida Memorial. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's good to see them participating. But I understand Edward Waters is supporting us in Florida A&M also. Yeah. Is that, is that Absolutely. true? Absolutely. And okay. then also the transportation, you know, the corridor of 313 coming through that mm-hmm. area. Um and in fact, Florida Memorial University owns a really large tract of land around that potential campus area. Mm-hmm. Um, so talking about the potential education uh, institution that you could bring in there, the economic development, the uh, academic aspect for just the community of the West Augustine, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's incredible. I had no idea the story of this. This is incredible, too. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about the burning, and then mm-hmm. they moved out. That's mm-hmm. um, awesome. In fact, a one fun fact about our presentation, because the task force was formed in such a hasty way, uh, we really didn't have a whole lot of heads up in terms of what to present and how to present it. And everybody worked day and night on this. And one of the things that we are really proud of is the rendering of the actual museum. Cool. And for one that, uh, you know, we, we, we try to be creative so that we're not spending a lot of time that we really didn't have to come up with a shiny building, which St. Uh, Petersburg, I think, did. Okay. And they uh, potentially, they said they had a pledge of NFL, uh, hmm. pledge of $19 million. We don't know how true that is. We don't know how mm-hmm. uh, culturally appropriate that is neither. But right, right, in, right. In, 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 instead of uh, coming up with a new building, our concept was that we want to honor and respect history. So we want that sort of a replica, but a, a improvement of what University of uh, uh, Memorial University used to look like. And mm-hmm. so we have a, a rendering we'd love to share at some point uh, with, with, the, with cool. the community. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be exciting to see that. I'd be interested to, to check that out. Um, affordable housing. Mm. Affordable housing. This is huge. Um, we've got uh, <coughs> the villages of West Augustine, 
I know we're getting ready to pop that up out here soon. Um, what are we looking like, not only with that project, but do we have anything coming down the po- Do we have anything coming up that that people can look forward to? Because obviously this is a big deal here in St. John's County. It's We have such a large amount of folks who are in the hospitality industry. I don't have to tell you this, mm-hmm. but um, our police, our fire, our emergency workers, our nurses, um, many of them just can't afford to live here anymore. Um, so how do we make sure we're keeping some of our most valuable folks here in St. John's County and not you know, pricing ourselves out of business. Absolutely. Well, one thing um, I can probably say with with a great level of certainty, and it's a good news and it's bad news, is that our housing market is not getting any softer. So the same issue, you know, it's a great news for our residents, our property owners here that, you know, um, the economy is going strong still for St. John's County, for Florida. Um, But that also does impose this issue with affordable housing, how we can make sure our, especially hospitality, our service uh, industry workers that would have a place to live so that they can offer the services and contribute back to the community. Um, I would say Village of New Augustine, uh, is or New Village of Augustine, that is probably the most exciting project that we can look forward to. Hmm. But along with that, I, I, I wanted to kind of broaden this uh, scope a little bit just to, so the, the viewers or the listeners have a, an understanding of how we are using this very comprehensive and multifold apo- approach to look at affordable housing because you're talking about because that's the only way that you can actually tackle this issue. You can't just say, oh, I, have, I want affordable housing, public housing authority, we're going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very expensive if you use one single uh, method to uh, to approach this. Our taxpayer is going to end up footing in the bill because, you know, who's going to pay for a public housing, you know? And so I think the comprehension of the approach that we're looking at is really the partnerships with all different agencies. So you have Ability Housing, who just did the groundbreaking, which is 90 plus units in West Augustine, where it, it is close to service, close to public transportation. That is huge. The investment from St. John's County, can I can say, is marginal compared to what is what that is going to be produced. And that is the kind of project we want to look for. We want to look for collaboration with partnerships with private entities, um, ability housing, why they're successful is because they are really creative in their financing. They look for ways of grants, They look from which is leveraging funds from state and federal, bring to St. John's County. They look for ways of utilizing and capitalizing tax credit, which is really your banks, your private businesses contributing to this issue that they in turn will really neg- negatively impact it by if we don't solve it because they need those employment um, mm-hmm. to be able to live here. And then also our board was very proactive and looked at impact fee uh, def- uh, deferral, which was very helpful in their financing. So the, the price tag for St. John's County for that project, uh, 90 plus units, was marginal. So that that's the great news. And that is the kind of model we want to continue to look at. Um, veterans, so Veterans Council, you know, Mr. Dudley, he's looking at some really exciting housing opportunity that he himself and the county, our board, have supported to lobby from the state so that we can create more housing for just veterans. Um, and Troy, you know, how, home, on, uh, home Again, you know, the, the uh, Home Again new uh, facilities, that is going to create new units. And that is a collaboration of the right resource that we got from ARPA. So so creativity in financing is going to be the key because, okay. you know, nothing nothing is free. So you have to find a way to, to pay for it and without adding burden on our taxpayers. Um, Chamber has played a huge role, um, you know, Isabel and Scott and uh, um, Bob, you know, that team, they have worked really hard to look at uh, attainable housing for essential workers. The study came out and that is going to be a good uh, consideration when we go through the comprehensive uh, plan update, which affordable housing is one of the f- a few uh, elements that we're going to talk about. Um, so hopefully it's a combination of resource uh, leveraging from state and federal and private and leveraging of creative financing like tax credit and also at the same time look at if there is any 
I wouldn't say it's free, but if you're talking about uh, land development code relaxation, that is free, you know, on, on paper, but uh, it could potentially generate positive um, impact on how the developer will be more interested mm -hmm. in using really the free market and capital um, market tools to create those housing. Um, and, and that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. The business needs to survive. They need workers and they need to be part of a solution too. Okay. And, and we get a lot of state state money with some of the projects like the Veterans Village that we talked about with uh, with Bill Dudley and stuff. Um, and right now we have a very powerful delegation from our area. All of them are timing out. Is there a con concern on the county side and some of the commissioner's side? You know, we got uh, Hudson who's timing out. We got Renner and we have Stevenson. We have three very powerful people in Tallahassee that helped us this past year bring in record, record number of money. Is there a concern on the county commission side on how do we fill that void of a voice in Tallahassee? Because there's going to be a gap. Um, and I just didn't know what yeah. the conversations between uh, the county commissioners and yourself with that being a concern. Oh, that I mean, that is that is absolutely a good consideration and a good point to bring up. Um, and we're not naive, think that we're going to have record years every single year. It really truly depends on the, the delegation that we have in the state when it comes to the state funding. So that's why we capitalize and we take advantage when we know we have a strong delegation. Mm -hmm. um, last year and this year, I think a combined, we're looking at close to $150 million of projects that we potentially can bring to through finish line because of the delegation, because of the strong advocacy mm. from our board last year, Chairman Whitehurst, you know, he, I mean, he knocked anybody's door that who's willing to listen to talk about transportation, talk about beach and talk about uh, public safety. And this year, Commissioner Arnold, and we're planning a trip to Tallahassee next week. And then we're going to do the same thing. Commissioner Alemo this week, just in Tallahassee right now, uh, talking with um, <clears throat> Appropriation Chairman uh, Leek, who is running for um, Senator Hudson's seat as well. Mm -hmm. So he has been a huge supporter for St. Giles County. They have talked about public safety. We were just talking about this last night, talking about a training facility for fire, talking about a regional public safety uh, facility um, in north sector of the county where the population is just um, Growing, going building, out crazy. Yeah. yeah. So everybody is really kind of rallying up when we know we have a, a assurance of the support from the state. Now, there is some, I don't know how certain that is, the gossip or the grapevine that there is potential uh, serious consideration of reduction of state budget. Um, and I don't know enough about how the national um, politics and, and, and political landscape is going to affect how Florida is going to make those appropriations. But St. John's County is unique. Nobody's like St. John's County looking at the kind of growth that we're looking at, looking at the need and looking at the story that we can uh, we have to tell. So um, so we feel so good about how we can still garner the support from the state and federal. You know, uh, Con Congressman Rutherford, you know, we were just talking about a couple of weeks ago about how he can support us to look at clean up the um the Guana Channel. So there is a lot of resiliency resources. We're also looking at uh, pursuing uh, on the federal level as well. Very cool. Um, so I want to get to next uh, the comprehensive plan, the survey, which mm. you touched on in just a, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, and then you guys working on plans that I'm very interested to hear about a more transparent, more open governments, getting citizens more involved. I think this is very important. Um, <laughs> I think they sh we should make this a very real reality. Cool. Um, but before we do that, we will hit a couple pieces of business here. And uh, first will be the Gas Buddy Gas Report. Oh, it's great. Gas Buddy Gas Report time. <laughs> All right. And sir. we will tell you the best prices for gas that we are seeing out there via Gas Buddy. And if you see a good price on gas, please let us know down in the comments. It's going to help us out a lot. We'll be looking for you, Tim. Uh, the Sunoco <laughs> at $21.99. North Ponce is at $289. We got the Mobile and Circle K, 292. That's at 800 South Ponds. We got the Shell on 146 King. They are at 294. Your Shell at uh, 2350. Uh, where'd that go? North Ponce is at 301. Mm. We got the Circle K on 207. That is at 302 this morning. And the gate on Mizell Road is allegedly at 304. Oh, wow. Yeah. I never know quite for sure. Yeah. Mm. But usually this is fairly accurate. We got Costco at 285. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Tim, I assume. Yes, oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, if you get in trouble for any reason, you got to go to jail. 
We hope it doesn't happen. But hey, you know, it might. Maybe you're just, uh, you're very upset about the cold and you take to your yard and your underwear to scream about it. You can't well, do that's that. illegal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Indecent. I, I won't do that again. Not no, nice. Please no. don't do that again. Jeez. I wasn't going to say I that I was talking about you, Troy, but you brought it up. Well, the fact it. that you had underwear on me, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's a new one for you. I was kind of shocked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris and Sarah Bail Bonds. He will get you out of jail, Troy. Next time you go to jail for this. He's available 24-7, 904-822-BAIL. 904-822-2245. We got some live music happening today and tonight as well. Jim Lamb at the Middle Top Tavern at noon. We got Michael Bo Griner, our favorite serial killer. Oh, hey, Mike. At Pierre's Pub at 1 o'clock. Smoke and Joe Shower at the Backyard Island Cafe at Meehan's at 1. We got Vinnie Jacobs at the Cellar Upstairs at 1. Michael Lee Howard, another great serial killer name. Ooh, Solid wow, serial man. killer name, Michael Lee Howard. Real, I can't wait to see their baby boss. Watch the papers yeah. for this guy. <laughs> uh, Pizzali's at 3 o'clock. Crawford Boyd's Acoustic Anomaly at Trade Winds at 5. We've got Trevor Compton at St. Augustine Shores Golf Club. Five. Vinnie Jacobs, Hurricane Grill and Wings at five. True Phonic, mm-hmm. Prohibition Kitchen at six. Spade McQuaid. I kind of like that name. Mm-hmm. Meehan's at seven o'clock. Vegas Gray at Pierre's Pub at seven. Dan Navarro at Cafe 11 at eight. And Contact Buzz <laughs> at Trade Winds at nine o'clock. Of course, Griffin Home Services brings us that report. They specialize in AC, plumbing, and electrical services, plus unique offerings like standby generators, water softeners, and they do gas work for like outdoor kitchens, fireplaces, fire pits, that type of thing. They're the home of the free service call and upfront quotes, and that's very convenient. You can experience fast, friendly, and affordable service seven days a week. Give them a call 904-500-2653 or visit griffinservice.com. And, of course, our friends at Fidus Roofing. They support a lot of local charities that support local kids in our area. Big brothers and big sisters of St. John's County investing in kids, uh, the Boy Scouts, and more. They are always looking to grow their team and would encourage you to come and apply with them. Uh, Give them a call today. Get a free roof inspection. so important, especially this time of the year. 904-355-ROOF. They do pavers. And gutters. All right. (laughs) Get some gutters. (laughs) Uh, County Administrator Joy Andrews with us here this morning. We appreciate her time in being here. Um, a comprehensive plan survey. Mm. What do we got going on here? How, how can people get involved with this? Well, stay tuned. We are actually still in the planning process. We have two consultants, and I, I wanted to mention the two different studies because I think it's important that I help the residents to understand the distinctions between the two. It can get a little confusing. We are really going strong with our open governance and transparency. So um, the residents are going to, and they, in fact, they have gotten hit by a lot of surveys and uh, solicitation of input and listen and learn tour and things like that. So there are a few things are coming up what that they can look for. Uh, comprehensive plan update, which is uh, we, we hired Inspire, who um, is a really experienced, um, very highly regarded in the state of Florida as comprehensive plan update consultant firm. Um, we also hired Barry Dunn, which is a very reputable firm who does the strategic plan. So the two... Um, I guess, initiatives um, that we are about to launch in next few months are two very distinctive different uh, things that we're doing. Um, But the two consultants are working really well together. So the staff is really very intentional and purposeful in trying to make those initiatives to be one so that the residents won't be hit by too many times on surveys and town hall meetings and solicitation of their feedback, um, online, um, you know, communication, things like that. So easy, and then we're looking at a effective branding and maybe, you know, slash hashtag on how we can help the residents to remember what the differences are. Comprehensive plan, from Joy Andrews' perspective as a resident, <clears throat> is your way to look at how you want your home, your county, the physical location of St. John's County to be in the next 10 to 20 years. And so that talks about St. John's County's land use on conservation, affordable housing, where do you put urban services, where do you put agricultural, where do you put um, subdivisions, Mm -hmm. residential, and where you want to see the economic development. So that is essentially a comprehensive plan update that we're doing um, for the next 15 years. And by state statute, you have to update that very regularly. So that is a really large, intense process that is going to take over a year. 
Uh, we are also doing a strategic plan, which essentially for residents, if they can remember um, using any hashtag is your government. How do you want your government to look like? How do you want your public services to be delivered? In what way you want us to prioritize them? And in what way you want us to measure them? And in what way you want to, uh, for us to report to back to you how you want us to, uh, to, to measure and in the success and, and, and make improvement accordingly. So that's the two different initiatives that we're looking. Both are incredibly important and both uh, require really genuine and authentic engagement with the public. The more informed our residents are, the better they can give us meaningful feedback. So that's really the two differences. So really, we will we'll make really um, concerted effort to to do to our uh, marketing and uh, PR campaign to let residents know how they can participate. We don't have the plan rolled out just yet, but we're looking at a month, between month February, March, and April for the town halls, the community engagement meetings, and then also online surveys. So oh. we'll find multiple ways of uh, residents' participation and maybe even paper. So. Whatever works best for the, for the that's individual. Exactly that's right. meeting yeah. them where they yeah. are. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. So how does that mesh with a more transparent, more open style of governance? What are you guys working on here? Because I'm, I'm under the understanding that you guys want to prioritize this. So tell me how. So to me, uh, open governance and transparency is not really a matter of style. It's really a principle. And I think all governments thrive to be open, to be transparent, um, but I think the, the level of commitment is different. So from our side, our team, I think the commitment for transparency is almost parallel to the three things that I, I, I'm going to talk a lot into 2024 is the service delivery, which is infrastructure, capital projects, and also your programs, your initiatives, your library services, your after school program. Um, the enhancement, the collaboration approach of service delivery and how we can improve that is number one and maintain really, I mean, maintain and improve, of course, because uh, we're looking at so many more people every single day. Um, secondly, and parallel, equal importance is the financial stewardship. How do we deliver all the services and capital projects without costing um, more on the residents? And keeping so, them alive. Sustainability. I mean, I can exactly. drive that home. I, all I'm hearing all this new stuff. I'm like, I hope it stays. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. Yes, absolutely. So keep them alive and so that we can maintain the level of service. And upon that, if we can get lucky with our state legislators and lucky get our federal legislators, if we are really creative and collaborative and if we are really easy to work with and our private um community likes us, then to, we can leverage a lot more resource than our tax basis. And that's really just one component of how we can resource the programs and the projects. But number three, which I think also is the, 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 on the same level of importance, is openness and transparency. But they are all tied together. I think for me, uh, we as a team cannot conduct our business effectively offer our services efficiently without understanding what the community wants. And the community, on the other hand, really cannot tell us what they want, what they like, what they don't like without understanding what we do. So I think it's that, that that's as yeah. simple as that. So we're gonna kind of tackle on those two sides. One is that we're gonna do everything we can to help educate our residents on what do we do. Um, I can actually, you know, we were actually just talking about that yesterday, Wayne and I, we were, and in a team, we were brainstorming how we can put together some sort of uh, residence academy, some sort of uh, one to three minutes, uh, know how to, how does the library uh, pick the books on the editor's uh, pick shelf? Mm -hmm. How do we pick our solid waste uh, providers and how your rates are determined? You know, things like that can be big, can be small. I think it's important for us to find ways to um, reach our residents and, and, and tell our story and, and so that they understand how their government and their services are being provided. What kind of rationale is behind all these decisions? They can be big decisions, they can be small decisions. So then they can give us meaningful feedback on, well, I like the program, um, um, but I don't know if I like the level of the program you're providing. You need more of it or you need less of it. So I think that is really the gist of the transparency that we're, we're thriving for. 
So we created an Office of Performance and Transparency. It's still in its infancy. We're starting with the one person. Sarah Taylor is our Chief Performance Officer. And so we're looking at the best practice model and with the help of all the staff, the directors, um, on how do we measure right. uh, what we're doing every day. Yeah. And it's a, it's a cultural shift of mindset, you know, um, and this is one thing that I actually talked to with, uh, greatly with with a friend of our mind, Carol Anderson, who's in, in, incredibly experienced in performance management and organizational efficiency. And we were just chatting the other day over coffee about vulnerability. How do we as individual and as a government need to be willing to show our vulnerability? We're not perfect. And I think the expectation of us being perfect is unrealistic. And us somehow the need and the desire to maintain an image of perfection is unrealistic. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be removed altogether. We are vulnerable and we want the community to know that we're doing the best we know how, but there are a lot, a lot room and opportunities for improvement. Tell us how. So I think if we can remove that filter of that expectation of you being perfect and us the expectation of you seeing me as being perfect, that would solve a lot of problems. I think that's important. I think people want to not only be able to communicate with our uh, county and city uh, leaders, but th you know they want that open dialogue. They want to know that you guys are humans and not just robots uh, sitting up there, Absolutely. you know, and imposing decisions on on the rest of us. So I think that you mentioned the open communication, the dialogue a couple of times. Um, so I think that is a very very important component about uh, about this, you know, because we go to county commission meetings and city commission meetings and things like that, and. You know, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions for folks and uh, for you guys as our county and city leaders. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think people feel frustrated when they bring things to a commissions, and this could be county commission, this could be city, this could right. be beach, all across the board. <laughs> um, and you know, we don't necessarily get a response. We don't have a dialogue. It's just kind of, we. F some people feel like they're talking at, at the leaders and the leaders are just like, yeah, okay, we'll take it for now. But, sure. you know, what's the response? Where's the, uh, where's the, okay, yes, we understand and this is how we're addressing that. And this, so I think creating that dialogue is, is so is so vitally important yes, um, for, a, for a well-functioning government. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the... Uh, the acceptance of vulnerability of on both sides, and also the acceptance of being open-minded. You have you you can you know from from the resident side of it. One thing I would ask of them is that don't ask a question with a predetermined uh, notion already. If you truly want to know the answer from our side, ask the question genuinely. We'll give a genuine answer. Um, and it may not be what you're looking for, but at least you got a, a real answer. And then that is the beginning of a real dialogue. Now, if you already ask a real, uh, um, uh, if, if it become a rhetoric beginning that there is no genuine dialogue, it, go, it takes I'm both I'm thinking sides. of school board yeah. meetings when people go off the rails, let's be honest. Yeah. And you can't really, uh, there, there's, no, there's no sense or logic right. on sometimes when these arguments. How are you going to prioritize some of this stuff that's going to be in front of you? Are you going to be measuring these metrics, doing these surveys, and then you know the needs of, that are going to be a need to be assessed in the community? Like, how are you going to prioritize that? It's, it's, a, it's a very good question. It's a very complex question. It's, um, and we actually have had a meeting with our strategic plan consultant, which the, the, the team is formed with impressive academic people who have done so much of these analysis, and it's a science. Um, and I asked the same question. I said, you know, we want to be genuine about putting out performance matrix um, publicly accessible dashboard. Um, but at the end of the day, you see Joy is doing, uh, got to be. And, and then what? And so what? Mm. So um, how how is their perception of service is this going to affect at the end of the day, the budget is really the real question, because if the, the at the end of the day, the board, um, the pilot, the most important policy decision is this once a year adopted budget, how you're allocating your resource to provide what service, mm. where do you place those services at? how big those services are. Those are very complex decisions that they are making. And um, 
one fundamental basis of those decisions is how the residents want to prioritize their need for services. Um, so one example, the uh, Karen with the, the, the principle of Barry Dunn, we discussed um, about the budgeting process and how the prioritization from the residents can affect our uh, recommendation to the board to allocate resource. She gave me an example of a police department at this fictional um, municipality. And, you know, you, you have input of how many FTE, how many police car. You have outcome of, you know, based on this, you have the outcome of the the, the, the rating, the perception of the safety of your neighborhood, how many car was broken into. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there is this measure. But then I ask her, OK, well, your example is in a vacuum of one service. But multiply that by 25. This is how many divisions we have. And they're all in a way they're collaborative, collaborating. But in the other way, they are actually competing for the same yeah. resource. So you and even just in public safety, you have the police department in this example. You also have fire rescue. They both offer critical, important public safety services, but they are also funded by the same resource, which is the residents' property taxes. So how do we prioritize the two? In a perfect world, everybody gets everything, but that's not the case, and we all know that. So. How do we, for one, to be creative about financing all the important services that's mandated? And how do we be creative about financing and prioritizing the needs above and beyond being mandated, but as enhancement of your quality of life? So it is a loaded question and loaded answer. I know I'm not giving you, David, the, 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 the absolute answer, but we are we are working on searching the answer that the best um, that we can. Yeah, so, but absolutely. just stay um, tuned. I hope that one day I'll come back and we can talk about the the um, algorithm that we're going to be using. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yes. oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a scary word. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy. Um, so, I've got one more uh, question for you, and it relates to the transparency issue. Um, this is in my show prep, and I think I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. Um, but we have seen. Boy, it's been it's been a I don't want to use the word tumultuous, but maybe the last four months have been interesting with the county commission. There's been a lot <laughs> that people have been following, and it's not necessarily county planning. It's more uh, more issues with people, personnel, mm -hmm. personalities, uh, that type of thing. I've got a story in my show prep here this morning, and the headline is St. John's County votes not to discuss Krista Keating Joseph investigation in public. So I'm just going to read a part out of this story, and it says, you know, we all know we all know the deal. Um, uh, Kristen Keating Joseph was censured. I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about if that's the right decision, the wrong decision. That's not my call to make. Right, obviously, right. I'm not in government. I don't sit in you guys' chairs. Um, so uh, this reads at, at a recent uh, meeting. Uh, the report from an out of town attorney uh, regarding Joseph's case was slated for discussion. However, the county's attorney uh, recommended removing this item from the agenda, a suggestion that was met with disappointment from Commission Chair Sarah Arnold. Despite Joseph's willingness to discuss the matter, the rest of the commission voted four to one to avoid the topic at the meeting. How does this square with transparency? Well, um, there are separate issues. Um, well, and I know there's legalities involved yes, in this, obviously, yes. right? Well, in fact, and in, from my perspective and from the county operations perspective, legality is everything. And legality is everything about this matter. So the county attorney, uh, well, in fact, the county attorney is the only individual in the county can recommend a shape meeting, which essentially is a non-public meeting. And in David uh, Megan and I talked about it and I asked him, you know, how those decisions were made and in what circumstances those decisions will be made. And it's very prescribed process and very prescribed criteria that you have to meet to be able to call a shape meeting. Essentially, my understanding of that, and I'm probably paraphrasing and not accurately, but basically my understanding is that if you have a litigation that's involving a board of county commissioner, in our case, the St. John's County Board of County Commissioner was sued by a individual, and it just happens this individual also sits on the board of county commission. Mm -hmm. um, when there is a litigation um, for them to navigate for them, when I say them, meaning county attorney assisting board of county commissioners, 
uh, navigating through the judicial process, um, there is somehow a provision in the state statute that you can you you have the right to protect your residents from from the cost of litigation without revealing the litigation strategy. Um, but that is true for really litigation. It's not specific for this specific one. So I can't speak for David how that decision was made, but that was my understanding of the criteria, how one decision like that could be made. Yeah. And will the public see kind of results of this? How will the public kind of uh, keep <laughs> informed on this? Because this is this is something that's very unusual, mm -hmm. it seems, for a county commission. Um, and, and I think people are very interested would, to know wanna, how this is going to unfold. I want to expand on what a shade meeting is. Yep, I, don't think, I don't think our audience understands a, a, a lot about how that works. Sure, sure. And a shade meeting is because Florida has sunshine laws, everything has to be open to the public and stuff like that. A shade meeting comes into play like... Like if there's negotiations for buying a property and it's going to change some of the properties or something like that. So the county attorney, uh, as um, Joy was saying, can request it be outside of sunshine. So when you hear the word shade meeting, that's that's what I just wanted to define right. that. So everybody kind of understood and was on the right. same page. Yeah. So I thank do, you. Thank sorry you. for interrupting. No, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously. Not the not the drama that everybody wants to deal with as a right, county commission, yeah. but obviously something that the public is interested in and wants to know more details as this unfolds. Sure. So. And Pete, to your question, my also my understanding because I had to get a crash course from Mr. Miggett as well. How the how the shade uh, slash non public meeting um, unfolds. And how does that work in terms of if there is a decision made, would those decisions be made under sunshine? The answer um, from David to me was yes. So the board does not make decisions in the shade. They do not make a decision in a non-public setting. Hmm. They only deliberate um, litigational strategies. But any decisions that have to be voted on has to be voted on under sunshine. So the residents, the public uh, will still see how you know the, the decisions are being being deliberated and voted on. Hmm. Okay. All right. Good deal. Well, Joy Andrews, thank you so much. Yes. Um, we appreciate the time that uh, you were able to spend with us here this morning. We thank went a little you. bit long, but it's great to just get totally. a good, full, uh, fuller understanding of what you guys have going on. A lot of exciting stuff in the works. So yes. happy about that. Affordable housing. Huge, 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 huge. So good to hear we got stuff in the works there. As well. I hope we get the museum. That'll be yes. so awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very we cool. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Name it and claim it. I like it. There you go. Awesome. Joy Andrews. St. John's County Administrator, thank you for coming you. in. We appreciate you. your time. Um, all right, I got to get to this. Just, I just got to touch on this very, very quickly. Oh, yeah, what's this? City of St. Augustine set to celebrate its annual Arbor Day. No, that's Arbor Day. No, what am I doing? Oh, you're talking oh, about the other one. I was thinking about the carousel. It was, it was oh, there. yeah. It was there. No, it was right here. Yeah. Proposal for new carousel in St. Augustine to go before the St. Augustine Commission. Uh, okay. Uh, in St. Augustine, a city park fondly known as Carousel Park by locals. This is going in the same thing. Uh, may soon see the return of a cherished carousel. It wasn't cherished. Nobody ever went there. Um, adjacent uh, to the main branch of the library. Mm. Uh, West San Carlos Avenue. The proposal includes a request for a lease agreement with the city spanning from January 23rd to September 30th, 2027. This agreement would permit the carousel's operation daily from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. where mm -hmm. nobody would show up to pay for it. Um, you got to pay somebody to be there, too, by the you way. You do have to pay somebody yes. to be there. Who are we going to pay to be there? Notably, the city stands to benefit from this... <sighs> venture financially. I don't see how with the proposed lease <laughs> stipulated that 15% of the carousel's gross revenue would go to the city. 15% of $7 a day? Is this real? <laughs> Or is Gosh, somebody just man, the over here? I somebody, hope somebody's not somebody pulling your Blake leg. Blake has cited the business journal in this. Is it the onion? <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, the plan includes installation of ATM machines at two key locations, a downtown oh, parking golly. garage, and the marina. I don't know what ATMs. I don't. Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be interesting. The meeting is, uh, let's see. The concept was initially introduced at the city commission meeting May 21st, uh, motivated by the joy the carousel brought to his children and the grandchildren. Mr. Brinkley uh, brought this up and is proposing this and wants to do this. And we're living in 2024. Nobody's going to a carousel. Stop. 
There goes the Troy Blevins uh, statue <laughs> idea. Gone. Yeah. Enjoy that's your character. That's, that's where they were going to put it. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay. Try how you want to check the comments, man. I'm going to thunder through the Thursday Tribe's thoughts and commentary. Okay. As you do that, I will tell people that Bates, you and Floyd set the standard that your home is more than a house. It's where your memories are made. They provide peace of mind and insurance to protect your biggest investment so you can focus on making more memories. Having a reliable local insurance agency like Bates, you and Floyd with over 40 years of experience in homeowners insurance, auto, commercial, and benefits can be a valuable asset in navigating the unpredictable insurance market. Uh, Christy Lawrenson, she's readily available at the St. Augustine office and wants to help you find better rates. Give her a call, 904-794-5455, or check them out at 165 South Park Suite C. And then our friends at Willow and Main Beauty Bar. Hey! They're your hair's best friend. My hair's not even my best friend. No, he left uh, you a long time ago. <laughs> it really did. It took off, Felicia. man. <laughs> took off. Mine's my best friend. I just haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's not your best friend. Pen pals. It's not your best friend. <laughs> Head over to Willow and Main. Feeling like your hair's in a rut? Willow and Main is your hair hut. From classic highlights to hair extensions, whether your hair is oily, crunchy, curly, straight, limp, or a little bit of a wimp, they'll whip it and clip it into shape. Don't let a hair emergency stress you out. Give them a call today and book your next appointment. And, uh, hey, dudes, Men's Day is Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It rhymes. Troy, what you got for comments, man? All right, so in the comments, uh, Nicole and uh, Barbara Jean, thank you for the stars. Thank you. Uh, suggestion on the swag was uh, bandanas for the Florida Man Games. Bandanas. Like oh. buffs or something that people oh. can wear in different Add ways. Add to the boom. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of comments, Joy. Colin, Joy, a rock star. She yeah. gave a lot of information today. Thank you for Fan that. Fan favorite out there, Joy, I, yes. I have to apologize. I was leaning into Joy's conversation, and my beard was evidently hitting the microphone oh, the entire time. You. So I apologize if, I, if I'm if Cut, over cut the prospector beard already, Troy. Yeah. Yeah. You've worn it for like two years, man. Right. And, uh, you know, someone has nominated you for the ribbon cutting at the carousel. Oh. You don't want me doing that. Yeah. No. <laughs> you don't they want me doing that. Then they suggest <laughs> Maybe Van be the person. Oh, oh Van. Van doesn't like carousels either. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> well, he lives under one. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 he does. Troll. You're not allowed to mention that. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, my bad. Stortum Stat. All right, Stortum Stat 1919. Uh, today was the day um, the Treaty of Versailles conversation started in Paris, and the Treaty of Versailles ended uh, World War One. But unfortunately, it was such a horrible treaty, and it was so unfair to everyone, like the Germans especially, the reparations they put on them. It almost forced them into World War II, mm. um, and it left Japan out. Uh, Japan In World War One. a lot of people don't realize, World War One. Japan was on the Allies' side. Mm -hmm. World War Two because of the Treaty of Versailles and how much they were, basically their voice wasn't heard at all. They said, screw you guys. And I'm joining the Germans. And so this treaty could go down as one of the worst treaties in the history of the world because it created World War II. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right, then. Very uh, dark, uplifting. Sorry, yeah. Sorry Ooh, dark stat yeah. there, man. It was either that or Winnie the Pooh. And <laughs> you booed the Winnie Jeez, the Pooh. Thing. Man. <laughs> well, uplift yourself at St. Augie's Pizza. There Go get yourself is. a great slice uh, of that pizza today. Try there. the Cuban pizza if they've got it available. And uh, St. Augie's Pizza, right in between Riviera and ML King. It's my favorite pizza spot in town. Plugs, hey, Troy? Lunch there yesterday. Um, well, I just got to give a shout out to my mom. I saw her pop in a little bit. Hope you're feeling better. She, she had to cancel her trip next week. Oh, no. Or, yeah, so. Hope she's feeling better. see my mom. Oh, man. Um, Davey? Hey, we got Irving Cass coming in talking about the history of the St. George Inn this afternoon. All right, oh, Clay. the anniversary. Oh, uh, Cafe 11. Cafe 11. <laughs> tonight. Hey. All right. And I will tell you to go to the FloridaManGames.com and make sure you are there at the global phenomenon that is the Florida Man Games. It's going to be exciting. We'll see you there. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll see you at three. All right. Bye-bye.